I know it's been a long time since I did a multiverses video or even a Papa Gino's video for that matter. Uh, I won't make a bunch of excuses for my absence lately, so just please forgive me and take solace in the fact that I am indeed back and I will be rolling out videos regularly from now on. Uh, even better, this video will be a very important one. If you're interested in who will be joining the Multiverses roster in the near future in like season two, this video is extremely important, so uh, be excited about that. I will be predicting and speculating what I think the rest of season two for Multiverses will look like, and I promise you, you will not want to miss this information. It's good stuff. I strongly suggest you use what I'm going to talk about in this video to set your expectations for who to expect might be showing up for Season 2 of Multiverses, and use my prediction roadmap that I'll go over later on in this video for a guideline for the rest of like Season 2. I will not be recapping like everything that's happened over the last month or so for Multiverses. There's just too much stuff to go over, and frankly, I doubt people are all that interested in hearing me regurgitate information that they can get by simply turning on the game and seeing what it has right now. Yes, we got Black Adam on Halloween, we got Marvin a few weeks ago, and yes, Season 2 has begun, and a bunch of other interesting stuff has happened and been added to the game. But again, if you want to get caught up on all the official stuff, just go turn it on and see for yourself. Repeating all of that here will simply waste too much time at this point, and I'd rather not do that. You've waited long enough for the good stuff, the speculation stuff. I will, however, be going over what important stuff has happened as far as speculation stuff goes, specifically character speculation. So I will recap a few things on that front in this video. I won't completely avoid recapping stuff, but only the rumors, leaks, and character speculation side of things is what I'm going to be recapping. The stuff I never made videos for because I haven't made a video in like over a month here. Okay, so now before we begin, a quick disclaimer. Everything I talk about in this video is merely speculation. Anything referred to as a leak or that I discuss here at all are simply rumors. Nothing is certain and don't believe everything you hear on the internet. Everything from here on out, no matter no matter what I say, no matter if I call it a leak or I sound really definitive about it, is all just rumors being discussed as news for fun and for speculation purposes. Okay, with that disclaimer said, hopefully WB will be cool and I can say the things I want to say without any trouble here in this video. And I guess I might as well start off with a big one. Tomorrow night is the Game Awards. Multiverses is among the nominees at the Game Awards. And... Leak time, I can confirm Multiverses will have their next character revealed tomorrow night at the Game Awards. So get excited and get speculating on who that might be. If you're wondering, I do know who we're getting. I know what character is getting revealed at the Game Awards, but I'm not going to spoil things completely here. In fact, I've known about this for a while, and waiting until now to even start talking about this in a video was partly to simply not spoil everything for everyone, as this game has had plenty of leaks already. It's basically been plagued with them, and as much as I enjoy leaks and leak culture and all that stuff, I enjoy speculating a lot more. So just saying today, a day before it happens, that a character is going to happen at the Game Awards, but not saying who it's going to be feels like that sweet spot of healthy leak culture that I like. Feels like a good balance of not spoiling it, but still giving you guys an exciting leak to talk about. And by leak, of course, I mean baseless rumors that no one should ever believe. Anyway, I might as well guide speculation in the right direction on this one, at least, so I'll give you some parameters. The Game Awards character is among this list of data mine characters. So there's your pool of potential options that might get revealed tomorrow. I know that feels a little cheap since every character we've gotten has been from the pool of data mine characters, but I'll go further and drop a bit of another bomb of interesting information about multiverses here and say we should start seeing non data mined characters showing up very soon, potentially as early as during season two here. So multiverses speculation is about to get much more exciting as the possibilities for who will start showing up is about to be endless and not just this small pool of data mine characters. Now that doesn't mean the data mine fighters are scrapped or won't be happening or anything like that. Just start to expect the unexpected. Characters that we haven't been discussing as leaked will start to get sprinkled in alongside getting the data mine fighters released. Do not have the mindset that we'll have to get through all of these data mine fighters before we start getting non data mine characters. Non data mine characters will start happening soon. But again, to be clear, the character that will be revealed tomorrow night at the Game Awards is once again from among these data mine characters. Also, I will be streaming the Game Awards, so feel free to watch alongside with me, and together we can all see who the new Multiverses character is when they get revealed. Uh, it's at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tomorrow, Thursday, December 8th. That's my time zone anyway, so again, feel free to come watch alongside with me. 
I'll talk more about this mystery Game Awards character later on in this video, and I'll also drop more major bits of information about Season 2 later on as well, so stick with the video. But for now, let's do a little bit of that recapping on important stuff regarding speculation that I haven't gone over in the last month or so because I've made a video. That way we're all caught up together on all of this stuff, since it'll be easier to talk about Season 2 predictions if everyone's on the same page here. Alright, so let's go back to the beginning of Season 2 for Multiverses. This current season started on November 15th and runs until February 14th. We also got a new login screen like we did for Season 1. However, this time, no new characters were revealed on the login screen image. Season 1's login screen had Black Adam and Stripe on it, which gave those characters away. And then we spent months waiting to actually get them in the game despite knowing they were coming. And honestly, that was a bit of a bummer to get them revealed that way, in my opinion. This time, it's just new skins and variants were being shown in the login screen for Season 2, making up the, the artwork for the login screen. Which I think is a good compromise. It's new stuff, but it's not revealing any new characters. I mean, technically, Fern is a new character, as in he's a separate character from Finn in the Adventure Time universe, but Fern is just a variant costume in multiverses. As a Finn main, I did actually end up picking up the Fern variant, and I really like it. Also, really cool, they got the voice actor for Fern, particularly because someone mentioned to Tony a while back in an earlier video revealing the Fern costume that Fern's voice was just Finn's voice, and that that was sort of a shame to not use the actual Fern voice from the show. And Tony replied that they'd look into it. The Multiverse's devs legitimately go above and beyond polishing this game with details like that. Always very appreciated to see them listening to the fans and going above and beyond to get something like the actual voice actor for Fern for the Fern variant costume. Also, supposedly Fern has dialogue talking about the Wicked Witch in the game's code. So let's talk a bit about Wicked Witch and Beetlejuice and what happened to them at the end of Season 1. Black Adam ended up getting delayed from, I believe, the initial release date we had heard was October 25th to instead releasing on October 31st. So Black Adam, ironically, was released on Halloween. I say ironically because I had speculated a bunch of times about getting a character released on Halloween. Or a Halloween character. And I even suggested one could release on Halloween itself. I kept saying that. However, I wasn't thinking Black Adam would happen there. Instead, I was assuming we might see one of our two spooky-themed data mine characters happen on Halloween, either Beetlejuice or the Wicked Witch of the West. My guess was that Wicked Witch had a better shot due to just having a lot more in the code, but she missed the Halloween window of opportunity and we still haven't gotten her. Potentially, her and Beetlejuice might just be shelved for now until next year and released for, like, next Halloween season or something. Or maybe we'll see them sooner than that. I think that's a decision for the devs that they might not have answered yet for themselves. I will say, after Black Adam got released, the only two unreleased characters with voice files that remained in the game's code after the update with Black Adam were Marvin the Martian and the Wicked Witch of the West. So it did somewhat seem like even though she missed the Halloween date, Wicked Witch could still happen. We also had a bunch of sleeping animations added for every character in the game, implying a character that can put characters to sleep would be coming soon. Velma supposedly has voice files that reference the Wicked Witch and specifically smelling poppies. The poppy flowers from The Wizard of Oz make people fall asleep, so adding sleep animations for everyone could fit for gearing up to add the Wicked Witch of the West with a poppy flower sleep attack or something. Of course, characters falling asleep doesn't necessarily have to be for the Wicked Witch, it could be for some other character's attack. There's certainly other characters like, for example, the Joker, who could have an attack that could put people to sleep. I'm picturing like poison gas attacks coming out of his flower on his coat or something, but that's all just speculation. What was not speculation though was when I shot down that Wicked Witch was happening next as our character after Black Adam and confirmed that Marvin the Martian would in fact be the next character. That confirmation coming from me got publicly stated on November 11th. and We didn't get Marvin confirmed until Season 2 dropped on November 15th. So yeah, I was saying Marvin was definitely the next character before we got that officially revealed. But of course, considering only Marvin and the Wicked Witch had voice lines left in the game's code after Black Adam was added, I suppose that's not the most impressive prediction. It was basically a 50-50 shot. So I guess you'll just have to wait and see the Game Awards tomorrow if you need me to earn some credibility with Multiverse's information. And I might as well add Marvin will be getting a Space Jam costume eventually. Though again, that feels kind of predictable, right? Anyway, there were other reasons to think it was specifically going to be Marvin next instead of Wicked Witch outside of me saying that. For example, the arcade mode added rivals for every character, and supposedly, according to the game's code, originally Marvin was the rival of Iron Giant. I think Marvin was the only unreleased character that was a rival for another character in arcade mode. Although Marvin wasn't added into the game yet when that was apparently datamined, back before, like, when Black Adam came out, I think is when that was datamined. 
Alright, anyway, moving forward to Marvin's reveal, it was a really strange character reveal. The Multiverse's website had a page people first found by just manually typing in slash season dash two into the website URL on the day season two dropped, which revealed this page which said Marvin was coming and showed a picture of him, though it didn't specify that he'd be next or not, and a big banner image featuring some unrevealed costumes, and also said the Game of Thrones stage based on the Red Keep's throne room for the Iron Throne would be a stage releasing during Season 2. It wasn't until like 24 hours after Season 2 dropped and this Multiverse's website had this information that the Multiverse's Twitter account, the place where we usually get the latest Multiverse's news, confirmed Marvin and the information that was on this website page. Just really strange. The marketing for Multiverse's is very chaotic and hasn't seemed to figure out the standards for how they want to reveal new things for this game. It always seems to change around where we hear stuff from first. Anyway, with a new season and major update, of course, we had rumors of data mined information coming out after that update. So let me briefly mention some of that stuff. Although we now know for sure, confirm the Game of Thrones Iron Throne will be a stage in season two, apparently the Warner Brothers lot stage that was data mined has a lot more strings added in the game's code after Marvin and season two started. So it appears to be being heavily worked on right now and likely will be a stage happening in the somewhat near future. Game of Thrones stage first, maybe WB lot after that, I don't know. A new string for Scooby-Doo was rumored to have been added with Season 2 as well. It would be really nice to get Scooby in the game here alongside Velma and Shaggy. There's also supposedly a winter event coming, probably something similar to the Halloween event we got in October. This might even end on February 7th as something in the game's code apparently reads, End Feb 7th. But Season 2 is confirmed to end February 14th, so maybe this End Feb 7th is actually referring to the end of the winter event. That, of course, is just the current hypothesis for what this end Feb 7th thing could be for, though. It could be the end of anything. And guessing when the winter event actually starts is anyone's guess. Maybe it'll be in December, maybe it'll be in January, maybe it won't be until February, who knows. There's something supposedly going on with the Batmobile, I guess. I've heard some rumors of that. And as odd as it sounds, maybe the Joker rides the Batmobile or something? I don't know, I just can't guess how else they would add the Batmobile riding around into the game. New perks for Batman, maybe giving him a Batmobile attack? That perks could maybe add new attacks. Again, no idea. I'm just guessing here. Something strange with the Batmobile going on, I guess. Also, someone noticed that the Batman stage changed from earlier builds of the game, specifically the way the Joker looks on the screens in the background of the Batman stage. Speculation is maybe this change reflects the standard look of the Joker in multiverses. Personally, though, I suspect he's going to look something like this right here, uh, just without the hat. But that's my speculation. Also, very sadly, Kevin Conroy passed away, and as far as I'm aware, Multiverses might be the last time he gave us a official performance with his iconic Batman voice. He is my favorite version of Batman, and his voice is the one I hear in my head when I read the Batman comics, so it's very sad to see him go. Also with Mark Hamill, rumored to be voicing the Joker, this will likely be the last time Kevin and Mark have these two iconic roles playing off of one another. It's honestly tragic thinking about this and how these two embodied Batman and the Joker for so many people, especially people my age growing up, and I guess I can just take some happiness in knowing that multiverses will have Batman and the Joker, Kevin and Mark, interacting once again. On a lighter note, something that had been overlooked in the game's code was the mention of the Goonies. This apparently wasn't present back in the September 12th build of the game, but it was noticed before Season 2 started, if I recall correctly. And more strings of code referencing it were added during Season 2. Totally unclear if this means a character or a stage or what is going to happen with the Goonies, if anything. While I'm a fan of the Goonies, I honestly can't think of too many characters from it that feel like they'd work well as a multiverses fighting character. The only one that comes to mind is Sloth, so I suspect it's probably going to be Sloth if we do get a Goonies character. Personally though, I really like the idea of a Goonies pirate ship stage. I think that'd be really sweet to get. Anyway, this is why Sloth is now on the datamine character's image. This is a little lax as the character isn't really datamine, just the word Goonies is datamined. Also, there was some texture for the Matrix code found a while back, and that's why a Matrix character is on here now too. Again, it's kind of being a little lax, as you should probably take both of those with a grain of salt, simply because they aren't specific characters being datamined like the other stuff. It's actually simply things from the franchises in the game's code suggesting a character from that franchise could happen at some point. However, the other newly datamined character that's added on here, I'll go ahead and straight up confirm. So in Season 2, a string in the game's code labeled Aku's Mountain was found, seemingly a Samurai Jack stage based on Aku's fiery lair. And yes, that's exactly what it is. This is in fact for Samurai Jack, and I can completely confirm Samurai Jack is coming to multiverses. 
I can also confirm Samurai Jack was the character Tony was referencing when he wrote this tweet about pushing a highly fan-requested character forward. So expect Jack fairly soon if they're pushing him forward like that. And like I said, expect non-previously datamined characters to start showing up, potentially as soon as Season 2 here. So characters like Samurai Jack that weren't previously datamined might start showing up much earlier than you expect. On top of confirming that yes, Jack is happening and is that push forward character, I'll also add Jack will in fact be voiced by his iconic voice actor, Phil Lamar. So I guess Marvin the Martian won't be the only Marvin in multiverses. Okay, so with that bomb dropped, let's go to speculating Season 2 and create a roadmap of what I think we'll probably be seeing character-wise for Season 2. Like I said, we will likely start getting non-datamined or non-previously datamined characters as early as this season. However, I don't think anything is written in stone necessarily for what's going to happen in this season. The multiverse's devs seem to do things very much so on the fly, and decisions for who shows up when seem to be rather chaotic. They sort of shoot from the hip on when characters actually get released. For example, here's the Season 1 roadmap, with Black Adam on Halloween now. But during Season 1, it really seemed like Beetlejuice and Wicked Witch were heavily considered, since they were very prominent in all of the data mined information and fit really well for a Halloween release. But obviously that didn't happen. And now those two are potentially being shelved, maybe saved for Halloween next year now, who knows? Obviously we can't know for sure what exactly is going on with them, but it seems like they probably were two characters the devs thought maybe they'd have time to add for Halloween this year, and then it just didn't end up happening in the end. So, for Season 2, beyond knowing for sure who the character we will be getting revealed at the Game Awards tomorrow, I don't know anything for this season with 100% certainty character-wise. And I'd even go further and go as far as saying, I don't know if it's even possible to know all the characters in Season 2 right now. Just like with Beetlejuice and the Wicked Witch, some potential stuff that they might be thinking about doing for this season could end up happening or might just end up not happening. So basically, it's likely impossible to predict the full season, as the full season probably isn't a certainty even for the developers. But I still think I have a decent idea of what we should be expecting this season, so still worth planning out a roadmap and giving you guys some information of what I think is probably going to happen. Okay, so Season 2 lasts from November 15th to February 14th. So far, we've gotten our first character, Marvin the Martian, in November. I put Marvin here on the 22nd of November, and I think I may have gotten that wrong. And Marvin actually released on November 21st, but I already made a bunch of images, so close enough, I guess. Whatever. He was released around then. Anyway, it's worth noting Marvin was the only character revealed and released in the month of November. Before, in Season 1, we were getting new characters about every two weeks, but I believe things will likely start slowing down to about one character a month, from here on out. So keep that in mind going forward. One new character each month is probably a good ballpark estimate for the pace they'll be shooting for from here on out, which means we'll likely be seeing less characters than Season 1 in Season 2. Getting one character a month or one character every month is not a hard rule, of course, just an approximation of the pace to expect from now on. Like I said earlier, the next character will be revealed at the Game Awards tomorrow night, and the character is among this list of data mined characters. Now, whether or not the next character that's going to be revealed at the Game Awards will actually be the next character we get released, I don't know for sure. I suspect they likely will be. However, we had Rick, Black Adam, and Stripe revealed to us, but each of those characters actually ended up being released later than other characters. Even though we knew about Rick and Black Adam and Stripe and they were already revealed, we got other characters like Gizmo before them. So the reveal and release order for multiverses hasn't always been perfect. And I'm unsure how it'll go down with the Game Awards character, whether they'll get revealed and then release next, or if they'll get revealed and then some other character will get released and we'll get them released later on. So things get speculative here basically right from the get-go, but let's just say for the sake of argument that the Game Awards character is the next character that also gets released, and thus making them the December release character if the pace is about one character a month. I'm putting a question mark, that's the Game Awards character, on December 20th, but December 20th is just an arbitrary date in the middle of December. Characters tend to get released on Tuesdays though, so I put it on Tuesday, but again, that's just a random guess just to put a character in December. And even keep in mind, even if the Game Awards character is the next character, that character could happen in, like, January. Just want to be very clear, I'm unsure on the releases, I guess, as I'm laying this out. I think they just kind of shoot from the hip with when they actually release characters. Especially with how many delays we've seen, it's kind of impossible to predict that. Alright, like I said, I know Samurai Jack is the character that was pushed forward due to fan demand. So likely they want to get Jack out there as quickly as possible and are putting resources towards getting Jack finished. Whether that means getting him out in time for Season 2 or not, I do not know for sure. I guess I should add Jack is not the Game Awards character, I can confirm that for you guys, so you can scratch him off of the potential list of characters we might be seeing revealed tomorrow. 
but maybe he'll still happen in season two. I don't know that for sure, but let's just put Jack on here as, again, he's a push forward character for the fans, so maybe they're trying to get him out for season two. I'm sticking him here in January, just hoping we get a fan favorite character that wasn't from the original data mine list in the game this quickly. It's just a hope. Again, I just stuck him arbitrarily on a Tuesday in the middle of January though, so don't pay too much attention to the release dates. It seems impossible to guess at them anyway, particularly with how many delays this game has gotten. All right, so very quickly, a Game Awards character and then maybe Samurai Jack in season two, and we're already pretty deep into season two now. Again, with a one character a month pace that we likely will be seeing, the seasons are gonna go pretty quick with only a few characters. Characters. And with Season 2 ending in February 14th, it just isn't really clear if another character could even happen in Season 2 after a Game Awards character and then one more. Or if the next character after this would be the start of Season 3 or during Season 3 sometime in February. I guess it's kind of just semantics though, right? If a character happens in February, if it's February 13th or February 15th and 14th is the end of Season 1, who cares what season they technically release during? February 14th is Valentine's Day and we did have a character drop on Halloween with Black Adam, so maybe we'll get this February character, if there's a character in February, on Valentine's Day, right at the end of Season 2. Who knows for sure. Either way, let's speculate one more character this season, and what do we have to go off of? Well, just taking a look at every character we've gotten since base game, from LeBron James through Marvin the Martian, we have yet to get a female character added since base game. It's been entirely male characters. Unless you count the gremlins, because they reproduce like asexually, so... Gender is not really a factor for them, but regardless, we don't have any female characters yet. If the Game Awards character is male, not confirming if they are or if they aren't though, and if we got like Samurai Jack in January, well, we'd still have nothing but male characters added since base game. Honestly, I don't see us going all of season two without getting a female rep. Just seems like they would notice that they've given us nothing but male characters and try to even things out a bit. In fact, it's probably more likely, instead of getting Samurai Jack in Season 2, that we get a female rep in January, or at least, again, during Season 2 at some point. I think even more of a priority than trying to get Jack a fan favorite character in Season 2, they try to give us at least one female character. But for now, let's just leave Jack in January and speculate one potential female rep as the last character for Season 2, or last potential character of Season 2 just so that we lay out lots of possibilities for what might happen in Season 2. Again, this is just a guideline, just a roadmap. It's not exactly what's going to happen for sure. But somewhere in Season 2, I nearly guarantee a female rep will be happening. I can't see them not doing it. All right, so who are the candidates? Let's take a look at the data mine characters. Nubia, it's still very unclear if they'll end up as a full-fledged fighter or just a skin or variant for Wonder Woman or what. So let's just leave her out of it for now since she's just a really uncertain anomaly in the game's code. A Goonies or Matrix character is too vague to guess at a female rep from those franchises, so I'm just going to leave them off of here for now as well. I just personally don't see them happening in Season 2. Eleven from Stranger Things, I hate to say it as I'm a Stranger Things fan, but I strongly believe she was simply used to pitch the concept to Netflix before it became Multiverses with Warner Brothers. In the same way that we had the random Marvel stuff in the game's early code that was used to pitch the game different places. Could Stranger Things and Eleven get in Multiverses someday? Sure, nothing's off the table, but I'd suggest not treating her as a data mined character like the rest, but rather as one of those pitched concept characters like the Marvel stuff. All right, well, dropping Nubia, Eleven, and any potential Goonies or Matrix female characters, that leaves us with four datamined female characters. The Wicked Witch of the West, Raven, Poison Ivy, and Daenerys Targaryen. The Wicked Witch did seem to have a lot of datamined stuff going for her in the game's code throughout Season 1. Maybe they'll simply follow through with whatever work they did on her and drop her outside of the Halloween season just sometime randomly in Season 2 a possibility. Again, if they did a lot of work on her, if they're ready to drop her, maybe that'll just happen. And it would give us a female character. Maybe they won't wait till next Halloween to do that. Raven and Poison Ivy are also both possibilities, though. Raven always seemed rather far along as far as the data mine characters go. There was a lot of stuff in the code for her, especially given how much was found for her in the game's code, even early on in Multiverse's data mines. She might be a character that they could quickly get ready to release if a lot really was done for her already. No idea for sure what they'll choose, but I'd suspect her default costume would probably resemble her original Teen Titans look, but maybe without the gray skin. Instead, skin closer to her comic book look. Some sort of happy medium mix between the two. But again, who knows what they'll choose as her default by the end. That's something that could change last minute or something. They're making lots of costumes for lots of characters, right? Anyway, Raven is a possibility here. Poison Ivy, of course, though, could make a lot of sense as a character to drop on Valentine's Day, if February 14th really does end up being when a character actually gets released, at the 
exact end date of season two. Poison Ivy is often represented as like a seductress character after all. So again, she kind of fit Valentine's Day. However, both characters are from DC. We got Black Adam at the end of season one, and we have many DC characters already in the game. Not saying they can't happen, but I do think they'll likely try to at least spread out how often they release DC characters, simply because there are lots of DC character fighting games out there already, and I think multiverses can be so much more than that, and I think they want to show off that they can be more than that. So I think they're only going to release DC characters maybe like one a season, if that. Yes, we got Rick and Morty. Yes, we got Gizmo and Stripe, one after the other. But still, just something to keep in mind, DC characters specifically, I likely think they'll be spread out a bit release-wise. Now, our final data mine female character is Daenerys. And we know we are getting a Game of Thrones-themed stage this season, the Iron Throne throne room from the Red Keep. Might make some sense to release Daenerys alongside that stage, or at least during the same season as the one that we get that stage. So the Mother of Dragons is also a possibility here too. Now, I did say I suspect Season 2 could very likely have non-previously datamined characters happening in it, and getting Samurai Jack as early as Season 2 is kind of just me being hopeful. So it's also possible we could get a non-datamined female rep in Season 2. So who could our options for that be? Well, one female character I think is actually pretty darn likely to happen sooner rather than later is Marceline the Vampire Queen from Adventure Time. Tony has mentioned Marceline often on Twitter. Yeah, Tony talks about a lot of characters on Twitter, but Marceline has come up a lot. And Season 2 of Multiverses has a ton of Adventure Time stuff in the Battle Pass. I don't know if you've noticed that, but it's like majority Adventure Time stuff. I mean, even our login screen is focusing on Fern. So potentially getting Mars during Season 2 actually might be more likely than many might be assuming. But there's also something else to think about during Season 2, and that's cross-promotion. Like Black Adam releasing close to his movie release, and Rick and Morty happening around the release of their new season, we could get more cross-promotional characters happening during Season 2. So what do I think might get cross-promoted from WB? Harry Potter. I know Huge Leaker actually said Harry Potter was out or having negotiation issues, but while there might be some truth to what Huge Leaker actually says, like some of their characters, some of the even wild out there characters could happen, I wouldn't take what they've said as gospel either. And I'd say particularly on the Harry Potter front, disregard what they said entirely. On February 10th, Hogwarts Legacy, another WB Games video game, is scheduled to release. Honestly, I could see Harry Potter stuff entering multiverses during Season 2 to cross-promote that game. Since we are already talking potential female reps, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say Hermione is actually fairly possible for multiverses. And I know that's an out there prediction. I know people are going to say that's like the least likely thing on here. But honestly, I would not count out the possibility of getting Hermione Granger as a Harry Potter rep and a female rep potentially in season two to both cross promote Hogwarts Legacy and also get us a female rep. I could really see this happening. Frankly, I honestly think Mark Marceline and Hermione are pretty darn likely for season two, possibly more likely than the data mine characters. I know it's unexpected, I know it's bizarre and out there, but just be warned. But nothing's written in stone, so who knows for sure. So there you go, there's my possible season two roadmap, or at least a vague idea of who I think might show up. I'll add that Jack might not happen this season at all, it's a little hopeful of me to think so, and maybe instead we could even get multiple female reps during season two to try to even things out considering all of the male characters we've gotten so far. Maybe whoever we get in January or whoever's in February are both female characters. We'll just have to wait and see. Or Jack and a female rep could switch places. Maybe Jack will happen to start off season three in the middle of February. Who knows how it'll all go down in the end. Some final bits of speculation worth mentioning. Tony was asked about adding more original characters like Rain Dog and replied if the community really wants another one, they could potentially do that. Personally, I'd rather have Rain Dog be it for OCs and multiverses, but that's just my opinion. Warner Bros. Discovery talked about Lord of the Rings NFTs, which sounds blasphemous to me as a longtime Tolkien fan, but the good news here could be maybe this is a sign that using Lord of the Rings stuff in multiverses might not be so difficult to negotiate for after all. We'll just have to wait and see, but I really want my Gandalf. 
And finally, I'll just add real quick, because some people have asked me about this, I don't know anything about Popeye for multiverses. I used him in a thumbnail for a past video, just because I thought it looked cool, and I briefly mentioned in that video that the official Popeye Twitter page mentioned multiverses. I know a lot of people got excited when that same Twitter page was posting some odd tweets that ended up not being for multiverses, but rather a Popeye comic book. But I just want to be clear, despite thinking he'd be really cool and using him in that thumbnail, I have no idea about Popeye. And I'd suspect if he does happen for multiverses, it would be a while from now. All right, well, there you go. A lot of good information there in this video. Hope it was worth the wait for you guys. And I'm happy to be back making videos now. If you want to join me for the Game Awards tomorrow night, I'll be streaming it. Again, it starts at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, December 8th, uh, Thursday. That's when it's happening for me anyway, my time zone. So if you want to come watch alongside with me, see the next character get revealed, see if I'm right about the next character, maybe I'll drop some clues in the stream of who it is before it happens, feel free to do that. should be fun. If you have any thoughts or comments about any of the stuff I talked about in this video, leave them below. Remember to like the video, leave a comment in the section below, and subscribe to Papa Gino's a Twitter, a Patreon, a Discord, a Twitch.